Hello, welcome back to the today class. Today we will talk about task 24.1. Robot. So today, uh, these are the, our today class objectives. We will mainly talk about the overall motion planning framework, where we will uh, we will first talk about representation of robot in space. Then we will move. Uh, then we will move on to how how we can actually discrete how this representation into the graph, so that we can do the uh, we can do the this uh, search well. Because uh, we do the planning based on the search. Uh, uh, some of the details of the uh, our today discussion uh, uh, actually did, uh, actually mentioned in the chapter two of my book. So if you have an unclear part on my the presentation today, you can go to the, the chapter two of my book and look at the details. And also before we move on, last time we talked about the uh, I, I talked about the class overview with the grading policy or some of the homework. So basically the bottom line is that this course is about the research oriented course. So I will give you the half lecture, and after the uh, midterm uh, midterm exam, you need to do the actually the, you need to do the paper presentation, also you need to do the midterm project, also also final the project presentation, based on the your uh, 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 based on the your research programs uh, along the uh, along uh, along the this course theme. So this actually some of the uh, uh, some information. So basically, there are about uh, eight to ten students actually registering this course. And uh, seventy percent like from the computer science, also the thirty percent from the robotics program. So it seems like actually the most of students, uh, most of students had some sort of, some of the, these prior information about uh, some of the prior really uh, uh, prior experience on the ro uh, in the field of robotics. Uh, somehow this year there's no ME or the electrical engineering students mainly because of I guess this corona corona nineteen issue. So every, everything should be done in the, this online issue. It uh, seems like there are uh, only the CS and robotics people actually they're taking this course. And I hope that uh, I expect to see the, the diverse topics out of these many different, uh, 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 out of these many different students. Also, there, you need to, uh, in the end, you need to do this project. So based on your, uh, your basically you need to read the paper and based on your reading of the paper, you need to, do, you need to find some idea and topic and conduct some research along that line. So there, you can do the, this. You can do that project by yourself. So one single people also possible. Uh, also, there you can have the up to uh, uh, also you can have up to three team members for your team. So there, uh, basically there you can discuss the you can discuss the uh, one might be who may be your team members uh, at the this K K L M S board. So basically there uh, uh, you can choose one two up to three uh, people. Also there uh, also last time I actually gave some of the homeworks. Actually, the, you might remember that. Uh, near the end of the, my uh, uh, near the end of my first lecture, there's actually the homework of the reading the uh, 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 particular chapter of the, this our textbook. Uh, uh, not my book, actually this the, uh, this the motion planning the algorithm book. And then basically, if you go over that uh, that book, you can easily you can easily the, uh, work on this the, uh, quiz. So basically, the, uh, let me let me click the, this link. If you click the link. You can see the, uh, this Google document, and uh, basically the, uh, write down your name, also the student ID, and then you know, the write down your uh, short answer to the, this, the, this one. Basically, if you read the, the book, you can very easily, uh, you can read the, the chapter, you can very easily the answer to this one. So basically, based on, uh, also the, uh, uh, by the, uh, entering, uh, writing down the, your questions, uh, basically also the, it will be, it will be your, this, the, uh, uh, it will be your, this class attendance check. So basically the, this, uh, today class, it will be on the third day, so you should do that uh, uh, within the, the third day. Okay, so the, uh, basically the, this is our problem. Our input is the, the robot, right? But the, uh, to simplify our discussion, we assume that our robot actually the, just a uh, point, uh, 2D point in the 2D plane, like this. So basically, the, uh, a lot of cases actually this kind of robot and some of the robot, we can approximate the robot as a point. And then also the obstacle can be, uh, we can actually look at the, the surrounding, uh, surrounding this the environment, right? And then we can treat that, the, that uh, we can represent those obstacles as uh, some sort of the polygon. I mean, there could be the many other representations, the point cloud, other one. But to simplify our discussion, we assume the point robot, also this the polygon, uh, this polygon shape to this obstacle. And there should be initial and goal position. That's our initial position and goal position. And then output of the, our motion plane problem is nothing but we need to find the collision free path from the, uh, from the start to goal, right? There could be the many different paths, right? We, this could be one path, this could be another one. 
this could be the path for that collision, right? So we don't, we don't, we can have that this is actually valid output. So every path, uh, basically, the every path we need to compute, uh, it should be the collision free. Otherwise, robot cannot follow that uh, one. But basically, this is one of the simplest actually the uh, our this uh, formulation of our motion plane problem. And again, uh, basically, the uh, here actually I'm just showing the workspace. Basically, the our robot actually moving around to the over to the over this uh, 3D workspace, right? Assuming that our point robot is the, uh, uh, assuming our robot is point, right? In that case, we just call it that this actual workspace that uh, we are working on, right? The, uh, our common uh, common space, and then this is actually the optical, and then uh, here the free space. Since actually we cannot, the point robot cannot have the collision here, right? So we call it the free space, and this start and growth position, and then basically this could be the one of the free paths, collision free paths, right? Sometimes actually we can actually moving around the, this space by touching the while touching the, the surface, right? If they are very narrow uh, corridor, sometimes actually we can touch the, we can actually the, touch the, this wall and we can actually move around, right? So uh, at that case, it's actually we can do the, uh, we can have we can have that kind of path, but we call it semi-free. Basically, the, we uh, we maintain contact actually, and then we slice through that the path. So sometimes actually, usually the, it, it, it's not really required to, for, uh, it, it's not really desired to have that kind of path, but at certain cases we might have to maintain the that kind of the contact. And also, there, uh, while when you have compute this path, there could be many different types of constraints, right? Uh, for example, we might have the uh, we might have the local constraint. For example, every uh, on the path, every uh, when you look at the particular point on the path, there should be uh, no collision, right? So that's that kind of local uh, local uh, local constraint. Uh, every point in the trajectory should be should be in the free space. So basically, the, that means that indicate that the path should be collision free, right? Also, there could be there some of the global global constraints, like the, uh, basically we need to think about it more wide information. For example, uh, there could be the many different paths, right? But there, sometimes we wanted to go there with the, the minimum travel distance, right? In other words, the shortest path, right? So to do that, we need to look at the different paths and then we need to compare the path lengths and so on. So to do that, we need to look at the, uh, this actually, the, uh, that kind of one computing uh, shortest path require a lot of information, sometimes actually global structure of the, our this, uh, uh, global structure on the possible space of the computing path. So that's, that's what typical we call it this global constraint. Also there could be some other, uh, other types of constraint. Actually there could be a lot of the different types of constraint. One of them is actually differential one. So basically there, here, and uh, basically there, suppose that this actual car, very simple car model, we call this kinematic car model. So this actually the this uh, uh, rear wheel, uh, also this front wheel, and then this uh, this satellite car orientation, and this pie is actually steering the uh, uh, a steering angle of your handle. So we are moving the car is moving at that direction, and we actually switch uh, actually we actually uh, we swing our handle at that direction, right? And then car actually the the third of car actually the uh, moving at that uh, uh, at uh, 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 the car actually will follow this kind of trajectory, right? And then so we know that basically if we do the if we some, if we do some sort of actual mathematics based on the, the structure of the car, so basically shape of car, uh, that uh, that's actually the, we can call this kinematics. So basically kinematics nothing but shape of the uh, shape uh, kind of the this the, uh, uh, geometric structure of the, the our robot. And then since actually there's uh, 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 due to sense to the this uh, particular kinematics of the car, uh, we can derive that this the. Uh, the orientation change delta theta uh, per unit time uh, delta t should has actually certain uh, should actually maintain certain the relationship. Uh, basically, the so in other words, uh, you know intuitively actually your car is moving very fast, right? At that case, even that you switching the car handle, uh, uh, you, uh, you actually the <coughs> you rotating your wheel a little uh, a little bit, then the basically the since you at uh, your car is moving very fast, you're actually moving a lot at that case, right? But if your car is very uh, uh, moving very slowly, then you can actually move a uh, uh, move more. You can actually rotate more, uh, and so on, right? So basically, depending on the, this kind of the velocity, the v, uh, also there, there are some other information. L is actually the distance between the rear wheel and the front wheel, uh, which coming from the this, the shape of the car. Then uh, basically, the the amount of the, the change of the uh, uh, change of the uh, amount of change of the rotating the orientation actually depend on the this one. So basically, this is actually differential constraint, right? So depending on your uh, depending on your robot, we can have some sort of this kind of di di uh, different types of the constraint. 
local global differential. Obviously, they're depending on the constraint that we need to consider. Uh, basically, motion planning uh, problem can be very difficult or the easy action. And then, uh, so far actually, there I mentioned that we just treat that the point robot, right? But you know, that in real life, there could be the many different robots, you know, there are even humanoids with the many, many joints, right? But uh, there are a very useful concept, the configuration space. Configuration space is nothing but we somehow the map of robot, even though a uh, robot that has a lot of that parameter. For example, for a human, we can actually have a, I mean, we are on a point, right? In other words, we can exchange the joint angle here. We can even rotate like this, right? There are many, uh, many freedom that, that we can adjust here, right? But even at that cases, we can actually map the robot at, into a point in one space. That's called a configuration space. So uh, uh, in a specific manner, suppose that here we actually, there, there are some sort of the manipulator with, uh, with the one joint, but this manipulator actually uh, grounded at that, at that location. So actually uh, here, you can adjust it, this, uh, 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 this lower arm like this, also you can also adjust it the upper arm. So basically there are, uh, there are two joints, not one joint. One, uh, you can treat this one joint that you can adjust it, another joint that you can rotate it here. So there are two different parameters that, that uh, basically there are two different parameters Based on the these two different uh, angles here and there, you can actually uh, change the shape. Uh, you can change the, the, the shape of the robot. So in other uh, here, in this, our initial position, uh, uh, initial uh, initial actually shape of robot located here, this uh, here and there, this already shape. And then somehow we wanted to we actually move around here, and then we want to we want to position the robot here and there. This is our the, this, uh, our goal position. The starting and goal. Then uh, I mean, the, then we need, to, we need to think about it. What are the actual sequence of the, this, the changing this kind of the, the joint angle, right? Uh, I'm at this point robot, but uh, in a configuration space, uh, uh, in a simple set we call this C space. It's nothing but C space. Actually, it's a dimension has the freedom of each ro uh, freedom of all the freedom of this robot. In this case, we have two two angles, one angle, another angle, right? So in the C space, we actually have a one angle. Uh, let's just say Q1 on the angle Q2, right? So uh, each angle can have the zero and the uh, two pi, right? And then uh, basically at that case, somehow the uh, here uh, at that case actually the uh, in this the, the 2D continuous space with the two angles, the, this robot mapping to the uh, point here, right? And then this point actually mapping to there. Then uh, basically the uh, comp uh, computing the path collision free path from here to there, nothing but the uh, collision free path. In, uh, from here to there in this C space. So this is dark area, the shade area actually, uh, at that case we have a collision, right? If you locate the, this robot into the, if you actually the change this angle uh, from here to there, we, you will have collision, right? So at that case it's actually changing the, the, the some, uh, some angle here to there, then we can have a collision, right? So you can see there are very narrow, narrow free space. Obviously it's a little bit difficult to find this path along this narrow path, right? So in other words, this is actually a very useful tool. In other words, we can ponder this kind of uh, a little bit uh, uh, arbitrary shaped robot with the arbitrary the freedom into the point. But the issue is that this space actually has a, this, uh, this C space has a, uh, uh, every, every parameter mapping to each dimension. In other words, C space can have the many, many X dimensions as you actually have a more complicated robot. But anyway, so typically we are using a lot, we using this concept C space. So whatever robot you have, in the end, we uh, a lot of the recent algorithms starts from the C space formulation. So you actually depend on your robot, you depend on your the C space, and then we do the actual discretizations based on the different sample in the random sample and other one. What's the actual discretization? So uh, one of the very uh, one of uh, one of very the only technique of the discretization is the actual visibility graph. Uh, basically, the, uh, what's the main idea here? Suppose that, uh, suppose that from here this is star and goal. Suppose that you actually have this kind of collision-free path, right? Then our observation is that if there's a collision-free path between the two points here to there, then there is actually polygonal path, polygonal path that bend only at the obstacle vertices here. In other words, uh, suppose that we actually call the free path, right? And then we somehow deform, deform in, at their way, and then uh, we uh, deform in a way polygonal path, and then they only bend at the vertex, uh, vertex of the, uh, uh, this obstacle, right? You can see that, right? So, the, uh, and then basically, and the, uh, uh, basically uh, then uh, we, uh, in the visible graph, we want to compute this kind of the path that gives us the polygonal, 
polygonal representation. So here, why we actually why we start talk about visibility? So here at this vertex and that vertex, so far we can see each other, right? If we can see each other, it means that we can walk along the this path without having any collision, right? So in other words, visibility turns into the collision detection of one, right? In other words, collision actually collision free also can be transformed into the visibility. There are actually it's not really sufficient and necessary condition. But the uh, here uh, main point is that there are certain very useful relationship between the visibility and uh, the uh, computing poly, uh, computing this collision free path. Based on that, early on, we want to compute the path, but there, we won't compute the path based on this visibility. And then uh, based on this visibility, we somehow to compute this kind of graph. And then here, the polygonal path, nothing but a piecewise linear linear the, the curve that bends on the vertex. That's the main idea. And now let me let me define the visibility graph. Here actually the uh, this actually started in gold, this actually polygon shape or uh, obstacle, and then actually here I'm showing the this visibility graph. Visibility graph is a graph such that uh, 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 here the node is nothing but this uh, uh, obstacle vertices, including star and gold. So uh, all the vertices star and gold uh, is uh, becomes the node of this graph. And then the next issue when we make the edge, right? We make an edge, edge exists between two nodes, U and V. If the line segment between uh, U and V, so for this U and V here, if there's nothing there, we can see each other, then it means that actually there, uh, if we see each other, in other words, if there's no collision, if, uh, uh, if, there's, uh, if there's no collision, in other words, if it doesn't intersect with or against another obstacle, it means you can see each other, there's no collision, right? So that's why then we make the, this kind of one. In other words, if we actually compute this kind of node and edge, it means that this edge gives us the all possible the paths that we can uh, walk along, walk along the walk along the between two two random vertices of this uh, uh, obstacle. And based on that, we can compute the, uh, uh, this kind of path from here to there, actually. Also, there here also we are also the computer. The, uh, we also consider this edge. I mean, the, we, if they actually the uh, uh, basically the big, we can also the walk along the this the boundary of the one. So actually, the we make the edge uh, the between U and V. If the U and V actually turns out to obstacle edges, so basically the here we we actually compute semi. -free, we can also consider semi-free the the path uh, that actually walk along the this edge while touching the this boundary of the obstacle. Uh, it's main concept in terms of very long time ago, and also it, uh, actually there are certain proof that we can actually pr we can produce the shortest path in the 2D in the C space, assuming that with the C space uh, while you're treating the uh, your robot into the this point robot. But the, uh, when you actually the uh, uh, the issue is that when you actually have a uh, uh, basically when you have very complicated robot, your C space could be there has many many dimensions. Then the uh, it's uh, time complexity actually for time complexity become very very high. So let me show you the, uh, uh, some of the algorithms of constructing this visibility graph. Uh, here is nothing but you look at the input is the star and goal, your polygon obstacle, uh, and output is visibility graph. Then you look at the every pair of the node U and V, right? And then every pair you need to check whether it's collision or not. If the UNV is optical edge, that means that we can walk along the, this optical boundary. So we put that edge into the graph. Otherwise, we check we need to check the collision, right? We are, uh, then we get the every optical edges, and then we check the whether our the, the, this uh, UV edge can intersect with the, the another edge E, right? And then if there is actually intersected, in, intersected then uh, we can add it, right? Yeah, basically, the, while we are walking U and V, there is a collision, right? We cancel it. Otherwise, it be actually the that it's a free space, free segment. So we put that uh, at one into G. And later on, once we complete the graph, then later on we will do, we will run some of the graph search algorithm to find the path from the SNG. This is like generally very simple algorithm. Let, let's look at the time complexity here. Uh, you need to you need to think about every pair here, right? So suppose that there are n bodies, then every pair turns out to the n square. Then also the uh, every pair you need to check the whether uh, that uh, that edge also the, the turn out to be the obstacle edge. So here actually for simplicity we assume that the n bodies is also the uh, you can see a, a simple setting of there could be n different edges. So this will turn out to be the big O or big O of n. Big O is the kind of big. Uh, some of you may not know the main concept of, of big O. 
big O is a kind of the uh, time complexity rotation. It means that as your the, as your data increase as a function of n, you also the uh, 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 your 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 running time increase as a function of the this linear one. Here at, at n square, as your input uh, increasing as a function of n, your time complexity in the uh, in the rate of this n square. Obviously, higher this is more the uh, bigger function. It means that we actually the average running rate slow. And then the same thing here for every other, uh, also there, uh, we, uh, basically here also we check the cool section. It turns out that also this is actually the big of n. In the end, the overall the simple algorithm is uh, an n square, and here every uh, every other, this inner inner in, uh, 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 inner uh, structure we actually have this linear one. So we need to multiply them, and it turns out that simple algorithm has an cubic time complexity which is actually very 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 high. We don't use this kind of algorithm, especially when you have the very a lot of data. And there are many other efficient techniques. I mean, some of uh, the rotational sweep technique that has n scale log n, like we might other one. But actually, in the end, it, we cannot use it, uh, this kind of structure. Also, this, the, the, uh, in terms of memory wise, also it used a lot in uh, n quadratic space. But anyway, so by uh, so uh, why this the using visibility graph? We, uh, it is very slow, so it, uh, in practice. In practice, we might not use this one, but in other words, but uh, 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 if we don't worry about time complex for now, we can compute this visible graph and then start and go. We actually have we discretize the free space. In other words, the connectivity between uh, connected between the actually the nodes, right? And based on that connectivity, we can find the path. So basically, here uh, every edge indicates that we can actually there are some of the uh, some of the free paths from here to there, right? So by walking through the, these edges, uh, there's possibility that we can find the path from the start and goal. That's why we use the visibility graph. Visibility graph nothing but a uh, discretization of the, this uh, collision free space that where we need to we need to compute the collision free path. So so far so far we talked about C space and then we somehow discretize this space so that we know the where, in what region we have the collision or not. And then finally we need to the graph search to find the path. And typically, we use the A star algorithm. So there are many different graph search algorithms: breath, uh, uh, breath first, death first, dark star algorithm, A star algorithm. Star algorithm. The uh, breath first is, uh, technique is that so far that is starting uh, this graph, maybe your visible graph. You start uh, this like start notation, and then you put the and next time you look at the you actually look at the, the neighbor node uh, level by level. In other words, starting from A. You look at the while well, connected node, and you look at the neighbor node, uh, a level, the a C and a B and C, and then also you look at the uh, next level, uh, uh, and so on. So basically, here uh, this breadth first algorithm, you traverse the graph by using the Q. So there, uh, some of you, I mean, if you're from CS, it's very easy, it's a very common concept Q. So basically, you here here you put the, this node into Q, and next time you you actually fetch the data, and then you have the B and C. Also, uh, while you are doing that, you also the, uh, you put them this uh, node in, uh, into the cube. So, uh, uh, due to the this uh, uh, structure and the nature of the cube, we actually uh, traverse this tree level by level. Uh, uh, but typically, the, we can just using this one. But uh, here, I will conceptually explain this one. More common technique is actually Dijkstra, the, the shortest path algorithm. If you took the algorithm code, you might heard about this one. Uh, basically, here this algorithm has to com compute the shortest path out of this graph. Here we assume that there are there are some of the weighted graph, uh, weighted graph also two vertices start and goal, and then also this weight is the non-negative one. So this, this basically this edge may have the uh, uh, indicating this the travel distance uh, 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 and that kind of one. And then by one this algorithm, we can compute the find the path of minimum total weight. So here, weight is the uh, distance between two two nodes, and total weight is the, is the uh, uh, total length of the uh, the path, right? And then uh, uh, basically, the uh, it is actually proof that this algorithm can find the path with the minimum total weight, and also the it also compute the uh, uh, basically it also compute the minimum path between the many different nodes, actually not just between start and goal. Also, it has a time complexity of the big O of O of the uh, the uh, uh, v, v, v and E is indicating the number of vertices, number of uh, this uh, V is indicating the vertices, E is indicating the edges. Here actually we look at the cardinality, in other words, basically we look at the number of vertex. Uh, the time complexity turns out that 
v uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, cardinal v log uh, 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 another this uh, v plus e. So basically, the, in other words, if we treat that the, uh, this v actually has uh, the number of the vertex n is nothing but n log n, n log n algorithm, which is very common of uh, appearing in many of these computer science algorithms. So there, here actually, there, let me briefly talk about the, how this dice algorithm, short path algorithm, complete the minimum path. So here's the algorithm, but there, uh, uh, basically there, uh, I will just show you, I will explain this concept in the illustration. If you took the, if you took the, this algorithm course, you might actually know, you might recall that this algorithm, which is a very, uh, very well-known algorithm. Initially, we actually had uh, this kind of the weighted graph. Uh, and then uh, basically this is a graph node, and also the each edge comes with uh, this weight. So far, this is just the uh, distance from here to there. And then uh, uh, we initially we initialize the uh, first node. Also, there are some uh, some costs. You can treat this as total total path length. You initialize everything to infinity, the, the infinity very long distance. And then this is uh, for the start run, we initialize the zero, right? Zero distance. And then we look at the neighboring node. In this case, there are three. Uh, uh, this edge and that edge. Basically, there, uh, 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 this edge you can reach there by walking this uh, with a cost of three, right? So you update it. Next time you actually update three, uh, for that one you can actually pass this node, uh, this edge, so you can actually reach there with a, a cost of ten, right? And then out of this, uh, out of this available node, and then uh, here you find out this one out of this available uh, uh, node, you pick the small one here, and then. So then you do actually look at the another another related edge. Here uh, it actually has this edge, and then if you take the, this edge from here, then you can reach this one node uh, with this the three plus one four, right? Before we can reach this node, uh, we can reach this node from here with a cost of ten, right? But now by actually looking at the, this node and passing the, this uh, this edge, you can reach the, this node with a shorter amount of the uh, the cost, right? This is called relaxation. So we can actually go there, but we look at the another another node. We, we, in other words, we relax. We look at the other node, and then actually by doing that, we can actually that possibility that we can find the shorter path. And then based on that concept, we can actually we can find the shortest path, and we keep doing that. So basically, the, then uh, by, uh, we can reach this node from S to G at a cost of four actually. And in this algorithm, uh, basically the main concept is that you look at the, the compute the optimal cost comp. In other words, at that point, we look at the, uh, the three indicating how much cost to come from start to the start to the, the comp to the, this, the current node. So here, every node will look at the cost comp, how much cost we need to do from start to the current node. Based on that concept, cost comp, we do the we can actually the, uh, compute the disk and, uh, we can compute the shortest path. Another one was uh, this ACE algorithm is one of the one of the very popular algorithm. It works quite well. It actually it, it runs quite fast also with the uh, 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 optimal path, a uh, very good path. And then this actually is uh, some of the modification of the Dijkstra algorithm based on heuristic estimate. Heuristic estimate. You, you, uh, based on this name, you might think that this algorithm heuristic. It's not really like that. This actually algorithm conservatively estimates. So in other words, you can compute the optimal algorithm. It conservatively as uh, it conserv uh, uh, basically it, it, this algorithm can compute the optimal algorithm. But this algorithm estimates this one. It conservatively estimates cost to come. So in other, the main difference uh, over the this Dijkstra algorithm is that at this node, Dijkstra algorithm is only look at the cost to come from here, from the initial one, what's the cost up to the current node. But this algorithm look at the future. What might be the cost from here, current node, to the future, the goal, right? That's the cost goal. Uh, obviously, estimating future maybe the, uh, can have error, right? So to reduce down the error, it conservatively estimate the cost to goal from the, the current node to the goal. And then, the, uh, what's the meaning of conservatively estimate? The estimate should not be greater than the optimal cost goal, optimal one. So in other words, suppose that uh, this is your current node, that's the goal, right? In the end, basically, the, uh, to find the path from here to there, uh, there's obstacle, right? So you might, you might have a very detouring from here. Uh, uh, you know, the, you're actually moving along that direction and reaching there, right? It might be a very long path. But one might be the uh, a conservative estimate cost uh, from here to there. You can treat the, the this nuclear distance from here to there, right? 
every, I mean, the ideal cause should be the equal to the this, the, uh, Euclidean distance or the, uh, the actual one should be the more longer than this one, right? So if we, uh, so even though you are, uh, even though you don't need to compute actual path, if you just start measuring the distance from here to there, or showing this, the, uh, or showing this straight line in the Euclidean space, that might be the very conservative estimate to the cost to go, right? And then basically the, uh, that, that if you're using the Euclidean distance, that estimate should not be uh, greater than the ultimate cost to go. Uh, ultimate cost to go, then you can actually, I mean, basically this is a very, the, uh, kind of the very, uh, 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 tight bound of the, this, the, uh, the uh, future, right? Then, uh, how we can actually, the, uh, how we can utilize the information. We'll, uh, while, uh, when we are computing paths, we look at different paths, right? Uh, passing through different vertex, and then they could be made different paths, and then we sort the vertices based on the cost come and the, the, uh, the cost from the, the initial to the current one, plus the, uh, the estimated cost to go, the future, right? Then how can you utilize this one? Suppose that you actually find the you actually find the uh, path from here. somehow you uh, you find the path from here to there. You actually have a certain cost, let's just say ten, right? But sometimes actually you look at, you try to look at the path from here to that direction, right? Right? And then you uh, from here if you go that that path, then your cost go uh, cost cost to come is getting longer and longer, right? But here, in the end, from here, you need to go there, right? The, 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 you need to think about cost, uh, cost to go. But there, uh, even though actually, there, uh, if you consider the, the best optimal path from the here to there, assuming the, assuming the kind of the, the uh, this Euclidean distance path, uh, this path, at that point, you will know that uh, this path, if you go that direction, that path uh, should be, um, uh, can have the more wider, more longer path Compared to your current, uh, uh, compared to your current identified path from here to there, right? At that case, you can stop. You can skip the traversing the graph, right? That's your, in other words, you can call this the, uh, you can call the uh, explore, uh, uh, exploring this the, this portion of graph. That way, you can save the time. In the next time, you need to you need to look at every path, right? Every edge. But here, based on that algorithm, you can actually call the very unnecessary long path. And that's why you can actually the improve the, you can have better algorithm, better performance compared to Dijkstra algorithm, based on this A star algorithm. So usually when you have to start, it actually the, uh, indicate that you can compute the, compute the actual optimal one. Even though it, it just, the, somehow I guess it, it's a misname, somehow the, it actually has the, this the heuristic estimate. So in the end, you can compute the optimal one. Also there, uh, about uh, five years ago, also I worked on the, this path, uh, this K star algorithm, that works on the, some sort of the uniform grid, but also based, but it actually the apply to the actual actual car. So basically, this AI algorithm running quite fast. So actually, we can using onto the autonomous vehicles. Let me the play the. Let me briefly show the, this video. So here, actually, the, uh, I collaborate with the, uh, another lab, and. We actually the uh, autonomous vehicle, and we actually design, we apply the, this the, this algorithm based on A star algorithm, and then we can we can uh, apply the, this algorithm to autonomous vehicle, and we can find the path in a uh, real time under this autonomous vehicle. This, the video actually is not moving. You can see that, right? Yeah. So I'd like to point out that this AI algorithm, uh, there are a lot of research and or still, it's like developed for a long time or it's still very widely used. Uh, so far, I talked about the continuous representation C space, and then somehow we actually discovered type that free space into the graph. Uh, as an example, I talked about the visible graph. So later on, we'll talk about many different types of graph. And then once we compute the graph, we do the actually the AI algorithm. Typically, we run the AI algorithm to find the path from the start and goal. Then you can do the, uh, you can actually the cover the, uh, one of the common frame of, of the uh, uh, finding the path. So uh, uh, basically this is actually the, about the uh, visual bit graph. So overall, uh, basically if we, if we are running the visual bit graph, it actually has the, the n-cubic algorithm. I mean, the, basically the, so far we assume that the, uh, the computing path, I mean, the once you actually have a graph, 
you can compute the, the you can actually run the dice algorithm, it has animal gain algorithm. But constructed you did uh, this visual graph require any qubit. This is actually the computation model lag, right? So we think about uh, what might be the better algorithm. That leads to the many of these classical approaches of the road map technique for the motion planning. Next time I'll talk about this one. And so far, we talked about actually motion frame framework, uh, this kind of one. The, the, the details of the, my, the, uh, uh, my the technique is covered in chapter 2 of my book. Uh, basically, the, if you go to the, the uh, home page, uh, if you go to the class home page, you can see that uh, here, uh, here actually you can see that my ongoing book, on, ongoing book here, the draft, right? If you click this one, you can see there are some of the one. Uh, basically, if you click this one, this introduction up here, and then you can see there are many different actually explanations about what we, what, what we talked about today. So I hope that you can utilize this book. I actually spend, uh, it, it's not really read, it's not really the finished, but there you can get there a lot of information. Okay, so again, so there, uh, by next Tuesday, you need to browse some of top tier conference or the journal. And then some the, uh, basically I know that it's very difficult for you to read the older part and then older the, uh, understand everything. That's not really required. The main reason why I'm giving this one uh, homework to you is that basically you need to do the, the project presentation. You need to do the conduct project by yourself with other team member. So to do that, uh, you, need to, you need to see the what are the available topics, right? That's why uh, I actually giving this homework. Browse the, this paper, look at the, that figure, what are the actual issues. And, and, and try to find the reasonable you know, topic that you can work on. And then basically, the, uh, you need to submit the, it's, uh, find two papers, uh, go over it, and then submit each app, uh, summary. You can write it in English or Korean. You, you need to copy the, you, don't, you should not copy the abstract of paper. You need to actually write down your own summary, and then submit, it, uh, submit that one information by clicking this one. This is actually an example of a summary. You can just write down just one paragraph with a paper title or the conference, conference name, uh, equal to the Susan Train, something like that. And let me click this, uh, this link. It's already slow, uh, but you can see that here is your student ID and name, and uh, first paper summary, paper name, and uh, conference name, and the uh, year, right? And so on. Another, the second paper. Okay, so every week just two paper here. And uh, what are barely the paper? I mean there are a lot of paper, right? In the end, you need to do the you need to you need to, you need to present the two papers in, in the class, right? Each one of you need to present two papers. And then the paper should be the related to course theme. And then the related course theme actually can be found on the, this kind of one, equal IOS, this RSS classical robotics one, robotics conference. Of course, there are many machine learning or computer vision in the field. You can find the related robotics technique, right? You can actually also present that, uh, that one. Uh, try to find the top tier pa uh, paper from top tier conference journal. Uh, you, uh, you, should not re uh, you should not go with archive paper unless it has a very meaningful site, uh, uh, unless it has a very meaningful contribution. How do we define the meaningful contribution? It's very difficult here, but uh, I will just say that uh, the, if, you, if you want to, to present archive paper, then every year, uh, since the, this publication uh, year, every year you should have at least 10 citations. So uh, our archive paper uh, uh, proposed about two years ago, then you should, if the paper has uh, more than 20 citations up to the today, you can present it. And then uh, also there, uh, there, uh, those papers should be the recent one. Recent one is that the paper should be published in between 2016 and 2020. So basically, the actual uh, one step paper actually in, in this the, in this category you can present it. Again, you know the general the homework. Go over the next lecture slide. Also, the come up with some questions just two times within the whole semester, and then I will I will go uh, basically the, uh, do not aim for the getting the high score. Uh, basically, the uh, 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 most of you will get the this the, uh, 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 most of questions will get this the, uh, a score of of, of one. But there, I just uh, encourage you to there, uh, just uh, write down the, this natural question arise in your, uh, in your head and submit that question. You need to at least submit that uh, two, cash, uh, two times within before the midterm exam. There are a lot of times, but I recommend you, uh, if you have a question, write it down here. 
And next time I'll talk about classic task planning algorithm, including this roadmap. That's it. Thanks so much. Bye.